does this relate to uh, learning disabilities? Well, let's talk a little bit about um, speech sound disorders and language impairments. Speech sound disorder is a problem in the development of speech production, whereas language impairment is a problem in the expression or comprehension of spoken language. Let's say that again. Speech sound disorder is a problem in development of speech production, whereas language impairment is the prob problem in the expression or comprehension of spoken language. It's important because reading disorders are linked to these. Okay? So when you're doing a learning disability evaluation, you want to make sure to note all of these different areas. Intellectual disabilities, inevitably, there's some impairment in language development. Right? They kind of go hand in hand. And the traditional definition included that language deficit is significantly below a child's nonverbal IQ level. But emerging research is showing that children may have language impairment and no uh, intellectual discrepancy. So it's really up to us to identify where the problem lies. There's little research done on the neurological or neuroanatomy of speech sound disorders, um, but what we do know is that the left hemisphere, which is the region for all uh, language, uh, may have something to do with it. It hasn't been specifically identified. <coughs> there are many different theories behind language impairment. Um, it, uh, many theorists uh, suggest that the core deficit lies in particular aspects of syntax uh, evidenced by problems with past tense. So if you have a child that's saying, I, uh, he walked there as opposed to he walked there, um, that might be indicative of language impairment. Uh, to diagnose language impairment, you really want to ask, was the language development delayed? Uh, particularly for expressive language. And do they have a history of articulation deficits? Possibly. Speech sound disorders, the best way to diagnose this uh, is, is the child reluctant to speak or very quiet? Does the child speak with full sentences? Do they conjugate verbs? Um, do they have any word finding problems? Oftentimes, speech sound disorders are comorbid with reading deficits. A parent might uh, notice that their child has an immature use of grammar. You know? um, so speech sound disorders are really easily observed. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, so the, that's uh, one of the easier things to diagnose as opposed to uh, language. So let's talk for a minute about developmental coordination disorders. A uh, child with a developmental coordination disorder is going to be slower to acquire early motor milestones and uh, their balance is going to be affected as well as their gross and fine motor coordination uh, for everyday activities. And it's going to be seen in everyday activities. It's not going to just be seen in one setting. All right? It's going to be seen through many settings. Um, roughly 5 to 10 percent of the population with a male to female ratio of 3 to 1. And a common, mor morbid uh, common uh, comorbidity is speech sound disorder and language impairment with 30 to 50 percent of children with ADHD also meeting criteria for developmental coordination disorder. Um, more severe developmental coordination comes from things like cerebral palsy, Huntington's, Parkinson's, uh, and acquired apraxia. And the brain mechanisms involved, in case you guys are really interested, uh, is the primary and secondary motor areas in the frontal cortex and cortical spinal tracts uh, that projects through the spine. So in essence, planning and initiation of voluntary skilled movement is impaired. Uh, cerebral palsy is the best understood developmental coordination problem. Uh, it's, uh, we know specifically 
that 75% of cerebral palsy is of the spastic subtype, which is increased muscle tone and reflexes that impair mobility. There are different types. Uh, the diplegia, which is both legs are affected, quadriplegia, which is all four limbs, and hemiplegia, which is half one side or the other. Um, sensory integration disorder I threw out there um, is one of the areas that is not actually a validated disorder. Remember, uh, we were talking a little bit about that. Um, and you know, I've got it uh, here uh, as developmental coordination, but it's also seen in other areas um, of just people who appear that they're not actually um, understanding information, taking all of the different information in. Uh, and then there's disorders of written expression uh, because of the fine and gross motor movement. Now, dyslexia. Um, this, there's a lot of different information out there on dyslexia. Uh, the universal truth as to how humans uh, acquire language and linguistic codes pertaining to words includes, first, all word languages include children with developmental reading disabilities pertaining to both recognized and manipulating phonological units of all linguistic levels. All right. So in essence, that's something that happens for all languages. <coughs> uh, children who have problems with uh, phonological uh, units, that they're, they're going to have problems with reading. Dyslexia and reading disorders is often used interchangeably. So um, it's not just the reversal of letters. You know, a lot of people think of dyslexia, they think, oh, you're just reversing letters. There's so much more to it than that. Developmental dyslexia, or reading disability or disorder, uh, is a problem with written rather than spoken language. And these difficulties uh, include uh, fluent word recognition and accurate word recognition. Illiteracy, it's estimated that two-thirds of students who can't read proficiently by the fourth grade will end up in jail or on welfare, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. 60% of prison inmates are functionally illiterate compared to 47% of the United States. I want to reiterate that, as many statistics as I can give you guys with regard to reading. I know, there's a lot. Um, 47 is pretty hefty. I know. Uh, reading disorder is actually associated with many different regions of the brain. Studies show abnormal neuronal migration. Um, so remember I was saying that the brain develops in a specific way? Well, let's go back to that microscarring on the brain that I mentioned at, at the very beginning. Uh, if there's microscarring that occurs in utero, and our brains are all developing the same way, then those scars are going to go to the same areas over and over again. And that will cause the same types of disabilities. Disabilities with attention and concentration, but also problems with reading, decoding, phono uh, phonological coding, word recognition, comprehension. And uh, most consistent evidence points to um, aberrant structures of the left hemisphere and those structures are really important with not only reading but language. So language and reading go hand in hand. Dyslexia has traditionally been uh, thought of as printed word recognition rather than reading comp comprehension. Consequently, reading comprehension problems without word recognition problems has never been counted as dyslexia and those people were just considered poor comprehenders. I don't know how many of you guys uh, have done or worked with um, uh, individuals that said, oh yeah, I was in uh, special education because I was a poor comprehender. They weren't actually diagnosed with learning disabilities when they were younger or dyslexia. They were just considered poor comprehenders. Well, newest research is showing that they actually do have a reading disability. It's not just that they don't understand, there's a reason that they don't understand, and that's something that can be addressed. 
Uh, research has found that dyslexic individuals as a group have a problem with oral language comprehension. So it's not just um, that they're not uh, comprehending because that's a, something completely separate. It all goes hand in hand. You have to be able to understand and able to, to be able to read. There's a phonological coding and orthographic coding that I want to draw your attention to. Phonological coding is the ability to use knowledge of rule-like letter sound correspondence to produce words that have never been seen before. Uh, so on the rat, uh, we're looking at word reading. If they're able to sound out words, that's what that's looking at. Whereas uh, orthographic coding is the use of word-specific patterns to aid in word recognition and pronunciation. So words uh, that do not follow typical letter sound. Um, rose versus rose. Um, on the Wyatt, which we didn't go into a lot of detail about, there's a subtest that has uh, non-word reading. So they're, not, they're made up words and they have the person read all of these made up words to see how far they can get before you discontinue the test. And it's a really good test because that's what it's measuring. It's measuring your ability to uh, sound out words that you've never seen before. Dyslexia has been linked to problems in the brain. The newest research that's out there is showing that it's not a discrepancy between IQ and achievement that uh, points to dyslexia or reading disabilities. The newest research is showing that individuals with low and high IQs can still have language impairment, or I'm sorry, reading impairment, and it actually shows up on neuroimaging. So it's not that uh, someone is just doing the best they can despite having a low IQ. That's not it at all. And this is incredibly important research because that means that these people will have access to the same sort of programs that individuals with high IQs and a severe discrepancy have. Um, so the discrepancy between achievement and academic uh, uh, ability. So the IQ used to be that um, the discrepancy between achievement tests, the RAT, the WIAT, and IQ tests the WACE, the WISC, determine if you had a disability or not. Now that's not the case, and we're going to get into actually diagnosing learning disabilities in a little while. Um, but one of the major breakthroughs is neuroimaging. And this is showing that children with dyslexia, after remediation, their brains are highlighting, are, um, highlighting, uh, lighting up in the same way as children with no uh, reading disabilities. So after remediation uh, for people with dyslexia, they, they can learn to read. <laughs> now, Erlen does a great job. Uh, it's called the Erlen method. Uh, there are other methods out there for helping people overcome their dyslexia um, by using uh, colored slides to read so they uh, they instead of having a flat white background they have different colors that move down the page as you read you move the little slider down the page that just highlights the line that you're on um, and instead of having the stark black white which can make the letters change in shape and color and size um, that uh, colored slide also changes the background for you um, there's a hundred different methods that they have. I suggest you look it up. It's really, it's really kind of cool, some of the stuff that they're coming out with to help people with reading.